please, sir. That gets my goat. Hey, everybody. This is Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anglovich. And I think we'll finish up our Harry Potter conversation. Heck, let's talk about everything but Harry Potter. Let's, let's go to a really dark place during this conversation. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> We've got so much stuff we could talk about, but uh, at one point we thought we had lost the recording, this mm-hmm. whole Harry Potter thing, because the computer froze. But your mouse still worked, which led me to believe it wasn't frozen. I don't know. The program froze, maybe. I was trying to click onto other programs and stuff, and it wasn't going anywhere. So I was sure that it was frozen. I shut it down, and it saved the recording up until that point, which was cool. For once, it worked out. That's a minor miracle as well. It is. It's almost as big a miracle as completing the entire eight-movie series of Harry Potter. This uh, this is the last thing I'll say, but when... Richard Donner got the gig to direct Superman in, I think, 76. He was a young guy. Uh, Well, really young. He's still older than we are now. I'm still fairly young as far as film directors go. But he he hadn't made a movie before. Well, he'd done The Omen in 75. But he was like, this is my life's work. This is my calling. I'm going to make these Superman movies for the rest of my life. Oh, I can't wait. I, you know, because he was one of those guys that loved Superman mm-hmm. and believed in the truth, justice, and the American way and all that stuff that Superman represented. And, you know, he and uh, Tom Mankiewicz had ideas for what they were going to do for Superman 1, 2, 3, 4, you know, the future. And it was like, let's hook our wagons to this uh, or hook our scrotums to this wagon whatever the saying is and let's do this you know forevermore and i think uh, you hitch your wagon to a horse or something like that some sort of a beast that pulls could it be a thestral or a uh, hippogriff I guess, I guess it could they do pull those little carriage things but uh that was taken away from him after the first movie because he had such issues with the producers and they knew that he wanted to come back and they didn't want to work with him again or, or didn't want to repeat the negative experience that they'd had with him. And he said in interviews, if Superman 1978 had been a failure, they would have made me come back just to punish me. You know? But because it was a hit, they got rid of me. <laughs> and if that first movie, a Philosopher's Stone, did you notice they called it Philosopher's Stone at the end of the movie? If that had been a failure, what would have happened? It's one of those things. I don't know. If even one of those movies had underperformed, you know, like when Star Trek V came out and everybody's like, eh, who needs it? What would have happened? You know, we talked about that in the seventh movie review. You know that Twilight and Hobbit and all those guys probably would have gotten cold feet about splitting a book Mm -hmm. if that seventh movie hadn't worked, you know. It's cool that... Not only did they work, but look, we got the biggest opening of all time, the biggest franchise of all time. It eclipsed Star Wars today, as far as I know, today that we're recording this as the the most successful franchise money-wise. And, uh, you know, that won't last because nothing does. Right. But these movies will last. The dollar, the, the inflation will just make it easier. Because as you were saying, when when you mentioned that the first time around, when we were at at Wendy's talking, in today's dollars, it eclipsed it. But if you adjust for inflation... In today's dollars, Harry Potter 8 didn't make a friggin' dime. Yeah, if you adjust it for inflation, just the first three Star Wars movies easily outperforms the whole eight of Harry Potter. Yeah, that's something to talk about in the future. You know, I was saying, like, my niece will remember this and how much of a phenomenon it was and, and... you and I look at the grosses of old movies. You know, Dr. Zhivago today was a $700 million movie or something like that. You're like, really? Yeah, Dr. Zhivago? We can't comprehend that. Just because times have changed so much with the advent of video and with the very, very short windows and, and you know, pay-per-view and, and all that stuff. And the multiplexes, getting the movies out as fast as they can and all that. But like a hit movie now was not a hit movie then. Right. You know, we have no idea what it's like to pay to see a movie that came out two years ago. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was that much of a phenomenon. It's It's gone through the nation, and now it's back again 
go see it again. <laughs> right. And, and, and that's kind of sad. You know, I, I don't know. I was just a little, little kid when Star Wars came out. Not old enough to really see the phenomenon around me. And Titanic is really the only thing that we've had that comes close to it. And maybe E.T., but a movie like that, a billion dollar movie, billion dollar domestic, you know, because like Pirates of the Caribbean 4 just crossed the billion dollar mark internationally. And it's the least successful of the right. four here. But those Harry Potters were special. And, and I'll remember that. You know, I saw all of them in the theater, mm -hmm. saw those kids grow up and noticed little things and noticed Ginny's really bad hair as an adult. <laughs> To see those kids, to, to, to be one of those kids, you know, that's a once in, that's the lottery right. right there, the acting lottery to have been born at the right time in the right area of the world with red hair to do a good audition. Yeah. <laughs> and all that just, uh, yeah. What do you, what do you think will happen to those kids now? They've been doing these movies for 10 years. Emma Watson did the ballet shoes and the voice of a, uh, character on Despero. Tale of Despero, and that's the only other thing she's ever done. And she's, I think, the most likely to succeed of the three. Yeah, where where, where are they going to go from here? Well, are they, they don't gonna... have to do anything else. They don't, that's true. You, they, imagine if I said, here's a billion dollars. Now, now, granted, they're not billionaires, but I would think that they will make money for the rest of their lives Every time you buy a Harry Potter film, they'll get a, 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 bit. a tiny bit of that for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And so somebody hands you a, a blank check and says, this is good for the rest of your life. Anywhere you want to go or anything you want to do, it's paid for. It's taken care of. Yeah, That's they amazing. Don't, they don't have to act anymore, but... Radcliffe certainly wants to. Yeah, that's what I'm and saying. So, Every Mark Hamill wanted to. I'm sure uh, Carrie Fisher would have loved to have been able to continue acting because it would have helped her keep, you know, her cocaine coffers full. Um, <laughs> well, Carrie Fisher had a, a tremendous success outside of Star Wars she compared did. to Mark Hamill. Right. Yeah, she did a lot of uh, things beyond that, behind the scenes. But... Uh, <laughs> You don't think all that stuff going on with the Harry Potter kids? The second that that last movie wrapped and they no longer have to be chaperoned and, and guided by these producers, it's like, no, I, I, you got to wear a helmet. We need you for three more films. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure they're doing all sorts of crazy stuff and they're living it up and whatnot. But you know, like every actor that acted as a child they want to keep going when they get older whether the world wants them to keep going or not so what will happen to them you know will they be like uh, some of those girls that were stars in the sitcoms and then they had to do some kind of you know soft core pornish kind of film to uh, get their name out there enough that people might look at them again will, will, will they have to be like Drew Barrymore and do Poison Ivy or uh, Alyssa Milano, Alyssa the, Milano, the one that she continues to regret that embrace of the vampire every day of her life. Right. But we certainly don't. <laughs> Here's the thing. They won't have to do that. If they want to make a movie, they can make that movie themselves. That's true. They can go out and hire a director and producer and all that stuff. If I were Emma Watson or, or the red-haired one or, or Daniel Radcliffe, I would have already started my own production company. Mm -hmm. And if there's a book that I like, I buy the rights and make it myself, be a producer. There you go. I've yeah. got a part for myself. And once you move into producing, that's when you get the real money. Those wow. those three actors might get a whole lot of money, but I'll tell you Warner Brothers has got a whole lot more and uh, Christopher Columbus has probably got a whole lot more. Yeah, the David Hay Heyman or whatever his name is, Hay the guy that produced those Harry Potter flicks, he's, he's doing all right. They've all got a whole lot more. And uh, George Lucas has got a whole lot more than Mark Hamill has. And yeah. so for the same reason, they ought to do the same and see what they can uh, get for themselves in the end. If that's what they're after, I guess. All depends on what you want. I don't know. All three of those kids seem so with it mm -hmm. and so down to earth. And that, that's hard when you 
are told from the from before you got pubes that the world revolves around you mm -hmm. and you have people screaming and taking your picture and drocking for your autograph and praying that one day they'll be able to sleep with you. That's got to mess with your head, you know, during that really important pivotal time in your life when it marks who you're going to be for the rest of your life. Yeah. And, and yeah, it, it, there's so few ex-child stars that go on to be normal people. Mm -hmm. You can almost count them on a single but hand. These, but these kids were, re and I don't want to say sheltered, but they were really protected, really umbrellaed, really watched over because they were such an investment. Right. And you know what? Maybe they were all three really good kids too. All three of them seem like the kind of folks you'd want to hang out with. Yeah. I don't know. There's so many of them too. It's not just those three. Like uh, the new Planet of the Apes flick comes out in a couple of weeks and Felton, Tom Felton that plays Malfoy is, is in that. Mm. And it'll be interesting to see if he has a career. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Would people jump on the chance to have one of the Harry, Harry Potter supporting actors? You know, is, right. there, is there a teen flick? Do they flick want Neville Longbottom or Ginny? Is there a teen Neville flick Neville that wants or... the girl that plays Ginny to be in their movie because she was in Harry Potter. And I would think, yeah, because that brings a little segment of this giant fan base that Harry has. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I read an interview with Felton and he seems like a really decent guy too. I, I, he auditioned for the part of Harry and didn't get it, but the producers liked him. So they dyed his hair red and he auditioned for the part of Ron, Ron and he didn't get it. And they said, okay, uh, how about Malfoy? And he got that. Dyed his hair white. <laughs> I think he already was blonde, but yeah. uh, maybe not. I don't know. We've never seen him outside of that. But, uh, you know, I, I wish these kids well. They're, since there's so many of them, some of them are apt to go bad. Some of them are apt to die young. The majority of them have to fail because that's just the way Hollywood is. Yeah, just if, if you have that money... And, and let's say that you were in all of them in eight movies and you've got this giant paycheck for 10 years coming your way and then suddenly it stops. That money's going to run out yeah. faster than you think. Uh, yeah, granted, they'll still get a check every month for the rest of their lives based on these things. But those checks are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And when the next big thing happens and suddenly kids, they don't care about Harry Potter anymore. Gosh, I, I hope none of these guys... Corey Feldman, I guess he looks back on his eight months that he worked on The Goonies or whatever as the best time of his life. And the time he was the happiest and the time when the future seemed brightest. And he was working on a movie for Steven Spielberg and he had all these kids that he hung out with every day and they got to play pirates and all that stuff. And our buddy Ian, he was telling me the story of that the, the Corey Feldman would cry when he'd talk about it. Of how, you know, that's what I thought life was going to be. And I wish I could go back there. Jeez, that's a horrible story. But I, I can totally see any one of these people saying, I was in the Harry Potter movies. And, you know, every summer we would break and then we'd come back to do the next one. And oh, it would be like seeing all my friends. And, and I got paid so much money. And people everywhere I went pointed and smiled and said, hey, you're Seamus Finnegan. And now that's gone. Now I'm 40. Okay, I've depressed myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> How the F did I turn this lovely discussion about Harry Potter into we all will die someday? <laughs> we get the robot in here and say, you will die someday too, big ankle bitch. Ha, uh, ha, uh, ha. Uh. Yeah, uh, nothing lasts forever. And uh, even seven books being made into eight movies has to come to an end. I am interested to see who it is that uh, will go on to greatness. Who will be Harrison Ford of those three? And who will be uh, the Mark Hamill that's, you know, the best thing he can say is he was the voice of the Joker and the Batman after that. You know, not like he needs something more to hang his hat on when it comes down to it. And that, I think, would be nice if so if they could just say, hey, I was Harry Potter, or I was Harry friggin potter okay i don't need he's in a bar saying this right i don't need to be the voice of the joker on batman all right i was harry 
freaking potter, okay? You wish you could have accomplished that much in your life. And I did it before I was 25. I did eight movies of one of the most beloved characters ever. So you can all just shove it. You know, he doesn't have to answer, but you, that, that's the problem is that, you know, things go away and and the public's going to be like, oh, well, what do you do now? Oh, you don't do anything? Well, I guess you suck. Hopefully they can uh, withstand those pressures and have happy lives. I've seen too many of those uh, shows on E or VH1 or whatever about people who used to be uh, child stars and how messed up they are once they hit adulthood and are unable to deal with the fact that they're not special anymore and they're just regular folks. Uh, hopefully uh, we won't have to read about, well, this guy who used to play this character on Harry Potter committed suicide today. That's right. See, now I, my my tendency is to say, well, it's going to happen. But let's end on a positive note. I'm just excited to see who does do well, who it is that turns out to be the Harrison Ford that has a $100 million film every couple of years and he's got... Not just Han Solo. He's also got Indiana Jones and uh, several other and, characters. And, you know, the, the thing with Harrison Ford is as huge a star as he was, he could have been bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, he was one of those guys that I don't want to do a movie this year. They offered him the Russell Crowe role in Gladiator and he turned it down because he had had a bad experience working with Ridley Scott on Blade Runner. Hmm. And they offered him the lead role in The Patriot which was that Mel Gibson movie that nobody but me liked. And, <laughs> you know, some of all fears, you know, he was going to make a bunch more Jack Ryan movies and, and he didn't do it. And it's all just because he doesn't need it. He doesn't want to. He's, uh -huh. he's been the number one star in America and he would rather fly a helicopter or be on a ranch in Montana or wherever he lives. And I, that's something that I hope that all those kids have is something else that they love, somebody that they love that they can be with that loves them because they're God, I gotta wish I could remember the names of the actors rather than their characters' names. Because they're Rupert Grint. You want a more uh, obscure character yeah. than yeah. that? Yeah. Huh? I want like a totally obscure one where you're just like, holy cow. You want to know the name, the, the... the name of the girl that played uh, Luna Lovegood. Luna, yeah. Crab or Goyle. Yeah, and see, <laughs> these, and I, I'm not gonna do it. But yeah, somebody that loves him for his real name rather than a character that he played in a series of great movies or great TV show or whatever. And, and sometimes that's hard. Find something that, that gives you joy. Mm -hmm. you, you Harry Potter summer camp doesn't last forever. Being young doesn't last forever. Find something that makes you feel that way. And, you know, hopefully it's not inside a needle, <laughs> but I, I think that's a real trick to life but to anybody's life mm -hmm. it's, you know we all have moments in the past where it's like oh well, then i was happy why can't i go back there the struggle is find something now mm -hmm. that makes you happy that makes you want to go on now i'm all depressed <laughs> more depressed than i got watching the last harry potter I, that, that's something that they didn't do was let's have all of our goodbyes everybody say goodbye there's a goodbye, you goodbye. Now let's hug this guy. Let's go see Gimli again. Now let's have the wedding. Now let's recount the art adventures in the Hogshead Bar or whatever, that, the, in the Prancing Pony. And now let's have this sad Annie Lennox song play while we all go fade into the sunset. They didn't just have ending after ending after ending. The three kids were, well, the three adults were there together and then it faded out and then you got your little coda of, they lived happily ever after. And so I think that helped me avoid some of that melancholy. Because mm -hmm. oh, it would have been so easy to just use footage of little bushy-haired Hermione and stuff, you know, at the end. Right. Show each one. And, uh, and yeah, they, they didn't do it. Yeah, they could have done something. With All right, dude. I think we need to bring this to an end. Is it really 3.30? It is, so we need well, to Well, let's go. see if we can end it at 3.33, because that's like some cool OCD number for me. Okay. Yeah. It is half of 666 after all. I, I'll tell you what. When that gets to the dollar theater, or it gets to that in-between theater you talked about in the other ah, episode, yes. let's go see Harry Potter 8 together, and that way we can talk about it afterwards. I'm sure I'll notice other stuff that I didn't notice. I'd really like to pay more attention to that Snape flashback. 
because mm-hmm. I, I heard somebody comment, oh, don't you love how they made him look young? And I was like, oh, I didn't, I don't, I didn't realize they made him you look didn't young. didn't notice that. And so, you know, it's something I want to pay attention to when I see it again. You'll see that shot where uh, Fred is getting uh, wanded. Okay. We'll make sure to nudge you or something when it happens. That works. Kick you in the nuts or something. Something to get your attention. I don't know why. <laughs> I think that would get my attention, yeah. <laughs> but, hey, uh, thank you once again for listening to That Gets My Goat. And I uh, am Harry Potter. I'm <laughs> Sorry. I'm uh, Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anklevich. I need to I need to stretch it out. We haven't quite no, made no, it to right. 333. We got to we got to finish. <sighs> okay, so give me a Harry Potter quote and I'll give a Harry Potter quote. A Harry Potter quote. Uh now nah, we'll just end it. Okay, mischief managed. There you go. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is. Hey everybody, this is Rich Outfield. And I'm Big Anglovich. And I think we'll finish up our Harry Potter conversation. Heck, let's talk about everything but Harry Potter. Let's let's go to a really dark place during this conversation. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> oh, you know, they, I'm assuming they didn't have anything after the credits, right? No. It didn't my my kids started bugging me once it oh so you didn't see see the and this will be off the air but at the end they have all these music credits and instead of just you know featuring some music by john williams or whatever they had the name of the song and so like hedwig's theme by john williams from harry potter and the philosopher's stone quidditch match by john williams from harry potter and the the chamber of secrets Mm -hmm. Uh, dumbledore's funeral by the guy that did the music in the sixth one and, and all that. And I thought that was really weird that they had all these callbacks at the end, but cool. Cause I mean, there was a lot more John Williams in this movie. Than yeah, there, there was, I the noticed end. that like the closing credits were, it was the first song that you hear play and it was not quite the last one, I guess. Cause they had to, the credits go on forever, but that was kind of cool.